All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we are going to be checking out a game from the East. A really interesting matchup from OP08. Katakuri versus Luchi. Okay, very interested in this matchup. I think, you know, haven't seen Katakuri in a while, right? Like ever since OP07, I feel like Anel kind of took over the yellow, the premier yellow leader spot. But we got a guy here that made it into the top uh, 16 or top 8, I believe, of a big, big tournament from the East. And, you know, the, I think these regional tournaments over in the East are around 500 players each time. So that's that's not a small tournament. You know, and it might have been bigger. I don't know the exact number. I'm, you know, don't quote me. I'm just saying it's like a large regional sized tournament for the East. And uh, Katakuri making it into the top, you know, the top um, ranks of that. Something, something to be said there, guys. Something we got to talk about. Uh, but we will analyze that matchup. And let me give you a quick breakdown of the whole video because we got a lot to talk about today. First up, we are going to be checking out some spoilers. Okay, we're going to be checking out some spoilers from OP09, some new leaders. Okay? Now, if you want to skip that, don't worry. I'll, I'll have everything time stamped in the general description. You can just go right past that if you don't like spoilers. Uh, but after the spoilers, we're going to hop over to this game, you know, what we have in the background here. We're going to be hopping over to the game, analyzing it, doing a full game critique, kind of talking about the plays and stuff like that. You know, we'll, we'll break down the game in that way. And then we'll finish off with a game on the sim of me playing Green Blue Rosanante. Okay, or blue, green, rosinante, whatever, whatever order you want to have the colors in. Uh, that that and and it's an OP07 list, so very very fun. And uh, and we'll wrap up the video by talking about it, doing a deck critique and all that, and kind of I'll give you my final thoughts there. Okay, so you know what you get into, guys. Let's do this. Let's dive into it because uh, we do have quite a bit to go over in today's video. First things first, spoilers. Okay, so if you don't want to be if you don't want the spoilers, pause the video, skip past, it and go to the next part, or go to wherever you want to. But we got to do the spoilers right now. Let's get this over with. Uh, here we go, guys. First up, whoops, there we go. First up is Buggy. This is a 5,000 power, 5 life leader with Yonko Cross Guild as its types. And then here's his effect. Activate main. You may rest 5 Dawn and discard 1 card from your hand. Play up to 1 character with the Cross Guild type from your hand. So... We don't have any support yet for this leader that I'm aware of. I, you guys tell me in the comment section below if there's any cross guild um, types already in the game. I did not do a search or anything like that beforehand. So if there is, you know, please, by all means, uh, tell me in the comment section below. But if I'm just going off sheer logic here, I would assume that these cross guild um, characters have to be something larger than 5 Dawn. Right, because otherwise, why would you use this effect? If it's a five dawn or lower card, why would you, you know, rest five dawn cards and trash a card from your hand just to play out a card from your hand? You could just tap five and play the card. So, I mean, again, just th through sheer logic and just you know process of elimination, I'm assuming these cards, you know, are are going to be well over five dawn to really make it worth it. Because trashing a card from hand is, is the steep part. Resting five dawn for a card over five dawn is not a big deal. That's like okay, we expect that, you know, and, and that's even that could even be like you know a discounted price if it's like a seven, eight, nine, ten dawn card. However, the trashing a card from your hand part, that's where it gets a little bit steep, right? That's where it's like oof, that's that's rough. Now, I mean, there there are other ways they could use this leader, right? There are there are other ways you could uh, maybe there maybe there's a card that says you cannot play this um, normally, right? So in other words, this this leader would be able to play it from your hand through his activate main. Like maybe they'll make cards that say this card can only be played through an activated effect. You know what I mean? Or something along those lines. I don't know guys. I, like I said, I'm just just brainstorming, just theory crafting. Uh, and if you guys have any cool ideas, by all means put them in the comment section below. But if I had to guess, the way that this will be tackled is they will probably just be very large vanilla bodies. You know what I mean? I, I, again, that's just if I had to guess. Uh, one thing that is interesting about this is, you know, this, this activate main here, Think about it like this. If, if there are some 8, 9, 10 cost huge vanilla bodies that you can play from this effect, this will be a pretty solid tempo deck. And since the effect costs 5 Dawn, you're going to always want to go first, I think. I mean, we'll have to see what kind of support comes out, obviously. But without any knowledge of the support, going first just seems really good, right? Because then, with you know, on turn 1, maybe Perona, maybe turn 2, uh, Dofi, Blue Dofi, and then turn 3 start plopping down the big boys so very interesting leader i don't have too much to say on this leader yet 
because we have to see the support associated with the leader. We just have to, because I mean, if you know, if he's playing out really garbage characters, then it's probably not the greatest effect. But if he's if he's dropping these huge, huge boss level characters, then this could be very, very interesting. Okay, next up, one more uh, one more spoiler to go over. We got Shanks, guys. We got Shanks on here. Whoops, there we go. And this is a red Shanks. Uh, this is a five life, five thousand power leader. Um, you know, just mono colored, very standard. Red Yonko and red haired pirates. He has once per turn, you may activate this effect when your opponent attacks. Give up to one of your opponent's leader or character's power, or I think it should say one, minus 1,000 power for the turn. Well, guys, that, it, it seems like a, a, a strange translation. Maybe it is correct, but the translation seems weird. But if it just, if it's basically saying that once per turn when my opponent attacks, I can minus 1,000 power to a character, uh, or was it a leader? Yeah, a leader or character, excuse me. I'm not too upset about that. Like, that's actually pretty good. And it's going to force my opponent to have to swing for more than five with one of his characters, or I get out of... It's like a get-out-of-jail-free card for one attack. You see what I'm saying? Like, if they try to swing five into my character, or, it, it, well, yeah, character or leader, boom, minus 1,000 for the turn of that. That, that attack did nothing. It just fizzles. Um, so that's very good. That is very, very solid. And there's one other thing I want to mention. Okay, there's one other thing that I want to mention about this. I just did a video yesterday on Red Green Odin, and I'll link that in the comment section below. But in that list, you run these these uh, cards, th these uh, five cost cards named Ezo. It's a five cost seven K. Now, you won't be able to use it in this. I don't think you'll be able to use it with this leader because I think your leader has to be White Beard Pirates type or um, uh, uh, Land of Wano. Sorry, guys, had a total c couldn't remember. But you won't be able to use that card in there. But there was an interesting interaction in that deck. That allowed you to, to to basically trash a card from hand and give a character minus a character or leader minus two thousand power for the turn, and then you can combo that with a card like Red Hawk to start popping characters you normally wouldn't be able to. So all I say all that just to to say this: if Shanks gets support similar to that, I even had I even heard someone uh, speculate in my uh, in the Discord saying that like maybe he will have the like support that forces a character to attack for the turn. That would be really interesting, guys. Like, think about it. If they have a blocker on their turn, excuse me, if they have a blocker on their side of the field and you force them to attack or something like that, that could be very interesting. But anyway, whatever the case is, comboing an effect like this with, a, with an effect like uh, Red Hawk, or excuse me, an event like Red Hawk, could be very, very powerful. If y'all, if y do, do some imagination, guys. I'm sorry. I don't have, the like, the slides prepared. Excuse me, but just think about that for a second, guys. Like, let's say, okay, it's their turn, right? And they have a Borsalino, right? Let's say they attack with their leader for five, okay? Well, or say, say they attack with their leader for like seven, even better, right? Say they attack with their leader for seven. Okay, well, once per turn, I'm going to reduce the power of your Borsalino by 1,000. Remember, Borsalino is just a 5K, except on your opponent's turn, he's a 6K. So now he's a 4K, and he doesn't have his protection. So now it's like, okay, and now, okay, you're coming at me for seven. Now I'm going to play Red Hawk, you know, if you have two Dawn active, obviously. And now I'm going to go up to 9,000, so I'm going to get out of that attack, and I'm going to pop your Borsalino in the process. So again, if there's like some synergy like that going on, that could it could be very interesting, and it could be really cool for Red. And I would kind of like that in some ways. I think that would you know it would kind of change things up from the way they're going currently, where they just seem like just this all-in blitz um, style and this dawn manipulation style, which is fine. There's not there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but at the same time, having a little bit of finesse needed for certain effects would be, it, it, it'd be nice. It, it would be, uh, it, I think it'd be a good addition to the color. Okay, that's enough rambling about these. I am very curious to see what kind of support they get. After all that rambling I just said, guys, we need to see what is Buggy going to get for support. Like, what are these cross guild characters we're going to get to play off of this, of, off of this, uh, this effect? And what kind of support will Shanks get? so that I can get maybe even more power reduction to start comboing with the, the combo I was saying earlier with, with like the Red Hawks or something like that. I just think that'd be really, really interesting, really cool stuff. Okay, so that's it for the spoilers. Let's go ahead and check out this game from the East. Let's go ahead and break this down. Let's analyze it. Volume is off. Let me make sure the setting is at, it's at 1080. Let me just set it there. Go full screen. And are we on 2x speed? We are on 2x speed. We're good to go. Okay, so... Now for this game, guys. Oh, let me pause and put my head up here. Sorry, guys. Always gotta, you know, gotta fix things on the fly. I like I like to do these in single takes for those who are not aware. All right, here we go. Now, Katakuri versus Luchi. That is very that is very interesting. I have to say. Let me pause and read their hands real quick. 
Okay, so the Anel, excuse me, the Anel player, you see what I did there? I, I'm gonna have to get used to saying Katakuri because I've been saying Anel for so long for these. The Katakuri player starting off with a Bayesian hand, 10 cost mom, all, all of these are all tarts, by the way. Very nice. And then he has the Onami, Gidatsu, and it looks like a Flampe. A Flampe, and he drew, he drew another 10 lin for the turn. Okay, then the Luchi player started off, he went first, and he started off with a Helmeppo, a Stage, 8 cost Gecko Moria, and Double Brook. Um, decent starts from both players, in my opinion. I don't think these are really um, awful starts. But at the same time, if I had to say, I think the uh, Luchi had a slightly, I guess like a slightly more versatile start. Okay, and maybe the, the way to play Katakuri now is just like an L, where you just go late, late game against them and just start dropping these massive characters left and right. Okay, so Luchi t attacks for 5, 2k counter out with the Flampe, trashing a a um, Gecko Moria, and it looks like a Khalifa into the into the trash there from the uh, Leader's Effect. Trying to fill up his trash so he has it, uh, f uh, access to it later in the game. Swing for 7, he's going to look at his top card, and he puts it at the bottom, so he knows what that card is on the bottom of his life now. Plays out Perisparo, the um, Luchi player does take it, and let's see what he has. I think it was a Helmepo he got from life, or maybe he drew that for the turn. Trash 2 cards. Okay, and he's going to take this one this time. Minus one, excuse me, minus three altogether to the uh, the Parasparrow. Minus one more from the Brook and pop it. So he's not, now he's going to get to activate his uh, on KO effect. Let's see what he gets. Top three search. Remember, guys, Parasparrow is only a top three search on KO. And that is a whiff, guys. That is what a whiff looks like. That is a Gadatsu, which is Sky Island. Nami is Straw Hat and Satori is Sky Island. Oh, man, that hurts, too. That was a 2k counter and a potential banish attack and um, a potential way to pop characters. But we do have another way to pop. We do have a Gadatsu in hand. He's going to swing for a 7 at life, looking at his top card and says keep it there. And now we're going to play the Gadatsu and pop the Brook. That was just a very, that was a very, um, you know, uh, what's the word for it, intuitive play there. It's like, okay, this just lines up perfectly. I'm going to take out your character on the board while establishing my character. I'm still going to get the swing and, and adjust my top life card, and we're going to go from there. Okay, but this is still any man's game to win right here. You know, it's not like one player has just run away with this. This is still a very close game. Okay, so the Luchi player has staggered his Dawn into a pile of three and a pile of four. So he's obviously thinking about doing some stuff there. Sometimes players will give you a false read with that, and that is a good thing to practice. That's like some very high-level play there, but there you go. There's the four that he separated to do a draw two trash two with Khalifa. Minus two to your, um, what's his name, to your Gadatsu. And he still has three left. So he could so he should be able to pop the um he's gonna draw two trash two. So he's getting rid of the Spandine and the Luchi, I believe, or it was a Hell Mepo. So now play out the Brook, pop the Gadatsu. So guys, minus one from the leader attack, minus two from the stage, minus two from the Khalifa, and then minus the last well, I guess that would have did minus six, but then he did another minus one from the Brook to pop the five cost Gadatsu. Very nice, well played, very clean lines of play here. And here we go. Eight Dawn turn for the Katakuri. Now, he does not have any um, seven cost Lin Lin, unfortunately, unless he sees it here. Okay, so we're going to see the, the uh, search. Oh, gosh. It, this is another whiff. Guys. So he's, he has the zero cost. You're the one who should disappear. That is a Anel or a Sky Island. Excuse me. That is a Sky Island um, event. One cost Pudding. You can't search Pudding with Pudding. Five cost. That's the new five cost Nami, I believe, from uh, OP07 and a Kikinojo, an Alt Art Kikinojo in hand. Oh, gosh, that double whiff, guys. I wonder what the ratio is for this deck for the Big Mom Pirate stuff, but that cannot feel good. But I guess in, in, a, in a strange way, I guess that also helped because now watch what he does here. For 5 Dawn, he's going to play out the new Onami, which requires him to trash a card to pop a 5 or less. It has to be a trigger card, by the way, to pop a 5 or less on his opponent's side of the board. And then if he has 3 or less cards in hand, he'll draw a card. So ultimately, it's kind of like insurance in that way. He has to trash the beige. That was his only 2k counter, but let's see what he gets. He does get a flam pay to get another 2k counter. Not bad. We do take those. We do take those. And now he's going to swing for 8 at the uh, leader. He looked at his top life and said put it to the bottom, and then the uh, Lucy player takes it. So now the Katakuri has knowledge of both, I believe, his top card. Actually, maybe he already drew it from the last attack. I can't remember. But he knows his bottom card and his opponent's bottom life card. Okay, 2k counter to get out of the 5. That's got to be a tell there. They're like, okay, you probably don't have a lot of counter in hand. So he swings for 5. Okay, and then Thunderbolt destroys the Khalifa. Very nice. That's why it is so important to do proper sequencing. That's why he swung with Khalifa first, in case there was a trigger in life to, to KO a character. Then he swung with his leader. That was very heads-up play, well calculated by the category player. 
All right, let's look at this hand real quick. So we've got a triple gecko hand, a, a jack, the zero cost uh, six king pistol, Hell Meppo, the stage, and Lucci. This is, a, this is a very weird hand, and it's actually, I feel like the hand has actually gotten worse over time. Now, we do, I believe we're on the eight dawn turn of the Lucci player, and I think this is his best chance to just slam down a uh, gecko Moria. Um, what is on the what is on his opponent's side real quick actually because Jack is also decent to start cycling out some of these gecko Morias. I need to see the board. Okay, so in this board state, he can easily get rid of the Nami. Who cares about the pudding? So, but he could probably potentially take out both with a Rob Lucci if there's one in his trash. If he does the stage to take the the Nami down to two uh, by, by playing out the gecko Moria, of course. Okay, actually, so what's go does he have? Oh, he only has seven Dawn now, I believe. He used one Dawn earlier. I must have missed that. Oh, I think he used a Tempest Kick. I could be wrong, but I believe he used a Tempest Kick there. I'm not sure, guys, but I did not... Uh, I did. I lost track of when he used that one Dawn. Plays out the Jack to pop the, um, the, the, the Nami, and I do like that, because now he can start filling up cards in his trash, like the Rob Lucci, which is what he just did, and now he'll have a very strong turn uh, follow-up with Gecko going into Hell Meppo and Lucci to pop something pretty big. Okay, but let's see. Uh, it looks like now we're on the 9 Dawn turn for the... Uh, actually, did, did I have it backwards? Hang on, okay. So that was the 9 Dawn turn for the Lucci player. My apologies, guys. I was a little bit off there. Now we are on the 10 Dawn turn of the Katakuri. Big difference. That's interesting. I guess he didn't have a Lucci already in his trash because otherwise he could have popped both characters and established the 9K body, but not the end of the world. However, the Katakuri now on his 10 Dawn turn is going to play out Lin Lin first to take a card from life uh, and add a card to his own life. And that's a very important thing to do it in that order because now it might make your opponent overreact and counter out of this, this uh, next one, this next attack from hand. But look what's in the Katakuri player's hand. He's going to pop another Big Mom down the next turn, at least according to what he has in his hand. He doesn't have another option. Okay, well, we'll see what happens this turn. Trash is a card. It's a who's who. That does not feel good. That was a 2K counter. Uh, counters out for one. So, so hear me out. I think there was a reason to, I, in my mind, just for me playing the game a little bit, I may have taken that attack there. I may have taken that hit because now his next Lin, Lin loses half of its power. And, and guys, I mean, look at what's on the board. If he's going to remove the Lin, Lin he's going to remove the Lin, Lin. But I guess at that point, then you do have to have like a blocker. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's, never mind. Given what's in the uh, Luchi player's hand, you can't do it because you don't have a blocker to hide behind against the Katakuri. Okay, so here we go. This is a 10 Dawn turn. Let's see what the Luchi can uh, scramble together here because this is, you know, this is looking pretty rough, right? This is getting kind of rough. It is a 4 life to 1 life, a, you know, 10 cost 12k on one side of the board, a 7 cost 8k on the other side, but with a very relevant effect. So, uh, yeah, attacking with the, with the leader first, I think, is the go-to. Is Did I see that correctly? Look at the back of this card, guys. So, the uh, Luchi player is playing with an absolute vanilla leader where, like, he doesn't even have it sleeved. Watch the back of this card, guys. <laughs> I, I love seeing that. That's awesome. This uh, this takes me back to, like, my first game when I was playing. Okay, he got a Kika Nojo trigger. Oh, man. So, that, that'll throw a wrench in the gears, right? That will throw a wrench right in the gears. Um, Kika Nojo trigger is crazy here. It wasn't even needed. The category was already in good shape, but that definitely helps him even more. Not to say the game was over or anything, but that really, really helps. So minus two more to the um so now okay, pause. We've done minus one to the to the ten lin, minus two, so it's at seven, minus five from the ice age, it's at two. And now let's see what happens. I think he's probably going to be able to take out both of these, right? Okay. So he's going to that that was odd. I'm sorry. That that was very peculiar to me. So if I'm not mistaken, if I did the math right, so minus two, minus one is three. So minus so so the the Lindland was at seven, and they got hit with an ice age to take it all the way down to two. And we know he has Lucian trash now, and he still had uh, enough dawn to play Gekka Moria. So why wouldn't you just pop the Lindland with the Jack, and then fully clear the board with a Gecko Moria bringing back a Helmeppo minus three to the Kikanojo, and you know, and of course, Lucci uh, popping the the other the other uh, the pudding. Okay, so here we go minus three. Okay, so 
I am so confused that this is a... Okay, now, okay. He's going to span dine to get the Lucci. Okay, very good. I thought he was about to bring back a Brook, guys. I was about to say this is just a straight-up play mistake. I still think it's a play mistake. Because if you just pop the... Because look what... Okay. If he just pops the uh, Linlin, like I was saying, with the Jack, then he can minus three of the Kika and and hit two one-cost with these with this exact play he just did. But now there is a one cost left on the board. Okay, so let's see what happens. Yeah, you just slam down Linlin and say I'm swinging five. That's that's the right play here. Now the question is, do you save the blocker or do you give him a 1K from hand? Oh, he swung five at Helmepo. That's interesting. Okay, so the so the uh, Katakuri player did not swing at life. He swung at the Helmepo that was tapped on the board. And honestly, I think the, uh, I think the Katakuri player, or excuse me, the Lucci player is probably like, Okay, sure, you got it. You know, that's because now I get to use him again this turn to get rid of this this Linlin, potentially. I, I don't know what happens here. Okay, so swing five. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's going to use the leader effect to minus one to the uh, Linlin. Swing six. He's going to have to take it because there is no... Another Kikanojo from life, guys. So he had to take it. He has no counter in hand. The, the category player has zero counter power in hand. Two seven Lins and a ten Lin. And he had to take that, and it was a Kikanojo. See, this is. I still feel like the the right play was to like fully clear the board the turn before and not even attack into into the, you know, into the um. How do I say it? Like, don't attack into the Katakuri with your Jack because you could have just done a full board clear. But hey, th this guy he got he's as you can see on the these are their records right here. So this guy went eight and one in the Swiss, and this guy also went eight and one. So both players are, are eight and one from the Swiss to get into the top sixteen, and uh, yeah, that's where I, this is the this is part of the top sixteen by the way, guys. If I had not already mentioned that. Okay, swings for nine. Takes that. He gets another seven lin. Oh, gosh. I mean, literally zero, zero counter power. This is the risk of running so many, so many, like, high cost cards that don't have... You know, typically the higher the, the, the card's cost is, the less chance it has of having, like, a, uh, a counter on it. So, in this case, having all these seven costs, zero counter cards, and ten costs, zero counter cards... That's part of the risk of running them, right? Is you know you might you might draw into a lot of bricks. Uh, it happens. It's just part of the it's just part of the uh, gamble of doing this, right? Now remember, the category does still know what his last life is. Hopefully, that will come in to help him or whatever over the course of this game. Hopefully, it was something good. But uh, currently, this is actually starting to. I feel like this is actually starting to flip in the favor of the uh, Lucci player personally. But we'll have to see what happens. Gecko Moria, we knew that was going to happen. Okay, and what can he bring back? I can't see what all's in his trash. He's going through it so quickly. And it looks like he has six um, six characters on the board. Yeah, okay. So you have to get rid of the Lucci. Oh, okay. So he had to get rid of the Lucci there. And th this is very confusing at this point, where it's like, wh why did he just bring back a Khalifa? Okay, he's going to be able to pop the... Oh, gosh. All right. So now it is just a math win, I believe, at this point, right? So instead of... Since he couldn't clear both the Kikanojo and the Linlin Lin, for some reason, um, he you know I guess he didn't have another Lucci in his trash or something. I, I'm not exactly sure. I guess with Ice Age it does complicate things because he didn't have Ice Age this turn like he did the time the turn before to to do to uh, be able to take out the big uh, the Tin Lin. But since he couldn't clear the board, now I think this is just a math win, right? I mean it gets to the point where it's like okay you can just start bashing through. This is a very, very bad situation to be in. And he did, he wasn't even able to bring back a blocker? I'm so confused. I, I wish I could see the Lucci player's trash. That's one thing I, I really wish I could see right now is the Lucci player's trash. Like, at least get back a blocker. You know what I mean? Okay. So, swing for, what is that, 11? And swing for 12. Or 11. It's, it's swing for 11, swing for 11. So, basically, what the player, the category player had determined, that you only have three cards in hand. Right? Or excuse me, four cards. Four cards in hand. So unless they are all 2Ks, you're basically not getting out of this, right? Because if he swings for 11, it would... So hear me out. So if he's at 5,000 life, 2,000 would put him at 7, and then another one put him at 9. The next one put him at 11, and then he'd need one more to get over. He only has four cards in hand. So unless he has literally three 2K counters and a 1K counter, the game is over. Because he had one blocker and two 11K attacks. That was a simple math win, and that's going to be it. So he shows him, okay, that would have been three, and then it needed to be two and two. GG, very good game, well calculated. It, it is nice when you top deck the, um, or not top deck, when you get double Kikinojo triggers. That is very nice. Uh, but at the same time, 
That's how that's how yellow is, right? A lot of people call it. It's like it's almost like the slot machine deck. Like, let's see how lucky we get this game. Sometimes you do get lucky. This is cards, guys. Sometimes there is some luck factor involved. But I also think that the other player, the uh, the Lucci player, could have played a little bit differently because if you don't have the blockers on the board yet, maybe it's not worth swinging into their life. You know what I mean? Maybe it is. It all depends on the situation. But in that in the in the one, I, we do have, we do have to go back, guys. I'm sorry. We do have to go back to this one play here. Well, I, I just feel like it was a blunder, personally. It was, it was actually the turn before this. It was where he was able to get the first Kikinojo. It was this turn right here. Okay, so he swung five into the Helmepo. That was actually a breath of fresh air, like I said. So it's like, okay, cool, yeah, you can have that. Actually, it's the turn. it was the turn before this, right? Hang on, sorry. I do apologize, guys. We have to just go a little bit back. It was it was this turn. Here we go. So the, um, the category player is just going to play out a 10-mom, gain life. His opponent lost life. He's down to one counters out with a 1k counter okay now this turn right here he attacked first which was good swung five with the luchi okay or swings six or whatever it is okay swing six with luchi sure okay what is he doing swing five he he's like all right never mind i'm gonna swing five just swing dude just swing whatever it is here we go okay swings five and he gets the kikinojo that's fine okay you have to expect that's going to happen at least at one point in the game. Twice is a little unlucky, depending on how many triggers are in the deck, but you're, you're going to have to expect that to happen at least once in the game. Now, hear me out. Right here, he saw us 10 Dawn. He has the Ice Age in hand. He's done minus one to the Big Mom. The Big Mom's at nine. You can get her down to seven with the stage. Now, after that, you know, she, after the stage, you hit her with an Ice Age to drop her down to two, right? Because she'll go from seven minus five down to two. So now he has a one cost, a two cost, and a four cost. You know, from there, let me see something. Oh, that's where you play out Gecko Moria to bring back the Helmepo and then do the Rebecca, Spandine, Lucci engine to just pop their entire board because you can also pop a card still with Jack. But instead, he decides to attack with the Jack. And, and that's where it confuses me. It's like, no, let's just clear out the board and not give him the potential for any more triggers or anything like that. So like I said, here we go. Minus five. So now the, the mom is at two. And then he swings for eight at the leader. That's what was peculiar to me. Instead, he could have been using this turn to cycle out a card with that effect and popping another card on the board. And yes, he would go up before life by popping the Kikinojo, but it doesn't matter because now you're starting to get full board control. And once you can start chaining together these like blockers and, and uh, Gecko Morias, it just gets out of control. That's what makes Lucy so strong. So, I mean, I'm not trying to like over overly criticize a player or anything like that because this guy obviously is an incredible player. He went eight and one. Okay, you know, there's not there's nothing like oh this guy's not good. He's a very good player. But I do think that was a slight play mistake in this situation. And I think sometimes against yellow, you have to you have to pump the brakes a little bit because again, now watch what happens this next turn. He drops another uh, ten mom, and and watch what happens. He attacks, and here you go. Here's another Kikinojo. Right, remember? So swing five, he gets out of one of them. Swing six, gets the Kikinojo right here. Boom. Okay, and now now you're kind of at the point where it's like. He has the um, the pudding on the board, so if he needs to, if he needs to add up for that, and I don't know, guys, it just it it would have changed the entire dynamic of this game if if, if that makes sense. And y'all tell me what y'all think in the comment section below. All right, let's keep going. No no reason to, uh, no reason to overanalyze, but uh, hopefully you guys see what I was saying. All right, next up we got a quick game on the sim of blue green Rosa Nante. Let me go uh, uh, make my 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 picture there bigger and. We are on, volume is off, speed is on 2x, and we're good to go. Okay, let's do it. So this is just a fun game, guys. This is Blue Green Rosinante versus Vegapunk. But I am running a list that is OP07, and I will show that after this game. Um, Rosinante is still a very strong leader. It's not like I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't tend to give up on leaders. You know, I, I try to, it is becoming hard on me as more and more leaders enter into the game. It's becoming harder and harder to keep up with all the leaders. So going forward, I mean, I'll say this right now while, we're, while, while uh, gosh, I'm like stumbling over my words. Sorry, guys. While we are waiting on this guy to make his plays and stuff, I'm start. let me pause it. I think soon I will start focusing on like a set amount of leaders because right now playing, you know, Vegapunk one day over to Blue Green Rosnante the next day, over to the meta stuff on the next day, then back to like Foxy on the next day. It just, it does get kind of hard on me. It's hard to keep up with all this because the, the game is evolving. Players are getting better. The meta is getting stronger. More and more powerful cards are getting into the game. And if I don't focus on one deck, it just starts getting very taxing on me. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, just ask in the comment section below. I'll try to explain it better. Okay, right here, I don't really have a good place. I'm just going to smash into the card that's on the board. Because as long as that Luchi is on, that Luffy is on the board, he can pop a four or less. And I've got two, two in my hand. I don't want to play because of that. Okay, so let's see what he does here. And I'm also setting up a really strong turn with my Gravity Blade Raging Tiger. Okay, 
Let's see what he does. He's going to attach one to his Atlas and swing for seven, or Atma, or Atlas, or whatever the character's name is. Swing for seven. Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger, Trigger from Life. That's fine with me. He plays out an Edison, and then he still has his leader effect this turn to either gain a life or put a card into play. I think when you're at two life, that's kind of the hot spot for Vegapunk. Like, that's where a lot of your effects can trigger. So I think playing a character onto the field here is the right play. He doesn't know I have Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger, but it's still a very good play. Especially since I'm going to swing first. Sequencing is so important, guys. Make sure you're sequencing properly. Swing five first to see what he gets out of life. Okay, Vegapunk has a lot of things to get out of life. He ended up getting nothing out of life, so I'm not going to pull the trigger yet on the, on the Raging Tiger. It's like, no, I'm fine with you swinging with Lilith and I can go about things this way. I would rather, how, how do I say this? Those are not the best targets for Gravity Blade Raging Tiger. So why would I worry about them? I'm just going to shut down one of them by not being able to, to attack this turn because of Bo Hancock. And then I'm going to go from here. He swings for seven into into uh, into five. I'm just actually going to counter out of that. Okay. And right here, he, he puts a Shaka on top. I'm going to swing five into five here. Just trying to steal cards from my opponent's hand. He should have let it go. Uh, just being completely honest, he should have just let it go, guys, because I'm just going to keep eating those cards up and eating cards out of his hand if I can. Okay, so right here I'm deciding, let me just go ahead and for sure get it now. I would take three cards to save that, and then I'm going to pop his whole board with a Gravity Blade Raging Tiger. Very fair, very powerful effect here. Now, notice I do have the Sanji in my hand, and guys, oh, man, the only deck I've ever seen that really pulls off Sanji like just brilliantly is Red Blue Marco, because it's baked into the leader. Like, trying to pull it off with stuff like this. Like, watch. I even tried to set it. You'll see. So, uh, set my set my cards. I want to draw onto something and go from there. Um, hang on one second. I'm just trying to get all this set up to where it was like, okay, I'll pause it when I get to it. I wanted to draw that card for, for uh, next turn. And then, actually, yeah, is that right? I wanted to draw into a Doflamingo. And then the next turn, draw into the, the Trafalgar Law. And then play out these, the, the Sanji to cheat out the Hody Jones. But it's like, because I wanted to play uh, Doflamingo first, right? So let me explain one more time. Sorry, guys, that was really sloppy. Next turn, I'm going to draw Doflamingo, right? And then the next turn, I'm actually going to, or, and I'm going to play a Doflamingo. Then the following turn, I was going to play out the Sanji to cheat out the Hody Jones and try to go for lethal in that way. But watch, it just doesn't, it just doesn't uh, line up sometimes. You know, it is what it is. I am running the Nine Calls of Zoro as well, by the way, guys, but I just didn't see it this game. Okay, so he's going to swing nine at face here. I'll go ahead and block that. I don't want to. I don't want to dip too low with this kind of deck. I have no way of gaining life, and I don't run a ton of blockers in this version. But that's okay. So he's going to he's going to KO my Gecko Moria. Swing for six and a five. I two K counter out because, like I said, I don't want to go too low in life here. All right, and then that should be his turn. He's going to oh, and, and then he used his leader effect to add one life, which was a Luffy. So I will swing for five. Let him play out the Luffy. He's going to pop my character probably. Chooses not to pop my character. I'm fine with that. I'm going to play out this guy and lock down your board. And and this is where it gets really, like, this is what makes Rosanate strong, in my opinion, is just go, having access to the blue and green card pool and just going really big. And when, and I understand Sanji's big. That's a 9 cost 9k, but I'd rather just keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. So he ends up playing out that Luffy and KOing my character with that effect. That was a little bit odd. I don't know why I just didn't do it from the trigger. But he probably doesn't have a lot to play in hand anyway, so it didn't end up mattering. Uh, I guess maybe just in case a better play came up, he saved it for that. But here we go. He's going to gain um, that card to life. And that, that card has a trigger, I believe, that plays a 5 or less. It's a 4 or less or a 5 or less from your trash. That's Egghead type. Okay, so I have ways to lock his board down. I would like for him to use this blocker. I'm going to swing 5 into him. That's fine. I, I was trying to see like what all he can get out of there. I'm like, ah, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Because I would love for him to use this blocker. That was my logic here. Use the blocker, please. Because I still have one big attack. Does not use the blocker. It's like, okay, well now I'm going to swing 10 into something here. I swing 10 into face. I want him to have that card. I'm fine with it. And then he plays, I think he plays out the Luffy. That's fine. And now I'm just going to lock down his board again. So now I've missed my opportunity to use my uh, Sanji on curve. But I know what my next card is anyway. I don't need the Sanji. I'm getting a Hody Jones next turn. Okay, he's going to swing 15, pause. Okay, make sure you know what cards do, guys. Make sure you know what your leader does. He tried to swing 15 into my Doflamingo, which would have easily KO'd him. But remember, guys, if you have five or less cards in your hand, at the end, or six or less cards, I believe, in your hand, at the end of turn, you stand up your leader, and he's a blocker. So I just blocked a 15K attack with my leader's face and drew, drew a card for it, and now he has one Dawn left to add a, add a card to life. 
and let's see what he gets. Not going to not going to be enough, right guys? Not going to be enough. We'll tap him down. We'll swing 7 with leader. We'll swing 9 with Hody and then 2 11s come or 2 10s coming through. 9 10 10. No way. Even a beige doesn't get him out of that one, right? Unless he had all 2k's in hand. GG, he did not. He only had one 2k in hand and a 1k. All right, Rosinante is still a very fun deck, and let me show you guys the version I was running. It's a little all over the place. This is not this is not refined. This is not finished. This is just this is my first draft, my first rough draft going into OP07. And um, one thing you know, if you notice, what I'm trying to do here is like, okay, currently the seven Warlords of the Sea package is just awesome. Like it's just so strong currently. So that's why I'm running all this seven Warlords of the Sea stuff. I probably need to fit in Sin Goku because of that, but we'll see. I'm still making adjustments, like I said. Um, but I'm running, like, you know, the Weevils. I'm running the, the three-cost blocker Dofies, the Peronas. I'm running the Croc, the Trafalgar Law, and the Mihawk 2K counters. I'm running the Jinbei plus Gecko plus Boa. And then I'm just going huge. I'm going to drop, you know, nine-cost characters down, ten-cost characters. And one thing I will say, or, or like I was trying to say earlier, I probably immediate uh, revisions to this list would be dropping down two of the Sanjis. I just think it's too cute trying to do it. I would rather just go up a Eustace Kid and up a Doflamingo. I know it would be so awesome to make a deck where these are like the whole entire like that'd be cool if Bandai made a deck that was all based around this nine call Sanji and this nine call Zoro and then maybe Luffy's the leader and he just plays both of them or, or not plays both of them. I'm not, I'm not trying to make anything broken. I'm saying like but it like has a way to get to them very quickly. That'd be really cool. Uh, but currently, that's just not a thing. Um, it is what it is. I, they do have a ton of potential. They're both Straw Hat searchable, but may, maybe in the future, right? Hopefully in the future, they have something where you can really unite these cards perfectly. But as is, man, it's just so hard to pull off. It's almost like Marco should have been blue-green or something. And I understand, you know, a lot of White Red Pirates cards are red. I get it. But maybe they should have made a card like Marco. Let me say it like that. Instead of like, you know, Marco could be red-blue and do what he does. But maybe if they made a blue-green version that was a Straw Hat Crew leader, like, like Luffy, like I said, and had some way to set your top life card. You know what I mean? I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, hopefully in the future. I am running the two useless kids. I just didn't see them. I saw both Dofies, and, and I feel like these cards won me the game. So, I mean, I think this card probably needs to go up to at least a three of, maybe a four of. Uh, useless, I just didn't see. Same thing with Zoro. And and like I said, I think like if I were going forward with this deck and really trying to refine it and make it, make it into something that can at least comp compete at a local level, I would probably drop the Sanjis and go up a uh, useless kid and go up a Doflamingo. Now, real quick, guys, what I'm talking about is definitely not a budget option. Uh, I think even with the reprints, this card is still probably running for like 25 bucks a card or 20 or 25 bucks a card. Uh, Zoro, I think, is around like 35 bucks right now. Hody's around eight to nine bucks. I think uh, Dofi's around five or ten. This card's around 10 bucks. So, you know, all the rest is pretty affordable, by the way. Like all of these cards on, on the right side, it's just the expensive, all these two ups. Let me see it like that. Every two of card you see here is pretty expensive, with the cheapest one being $5 for Doflamingo, I believe. And those are rough estimates, guys. Don't quote me on that. I have not checked the market today. That's just from the last time I remember them. Well, all right, guys, that's it. I'm done. We're done for today. Short video for today. It is, it is um, you know, on, on, at the time you're recording this, it is Sunday. So, it's, you know, we're going to use that as like a weekend day, a very chill day. Let me go and throw up the, uh, play, the play mat page here. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, everybody who does. Oops, let me shrink my head a little bit. There we go. Uh, big shout out to all the VV Pirates playmat supporters. Thank you guys so much. Uh, people are still like picking up the mat, which is awesome. You know, like people are still ordering it, uh, and I've got about half of them left. So if you're if you're still interested, by all means, uh, hop on it while they're still while I still have them. And then the VV Pirates patron page. Thank you guys so much to everyone on this page who helps out. Got another person on there last night, Umbra. Big shout out to you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank and thank you to everyone who watches the channel, guys. If you're viewing, subscribing sharing commenting liking whatever whatever you're doing it's helping me out guys it's feeding the algorithm the channel just keeps growing and i really appreciate it guys right uh please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already and as always guys if you have any comments questions suggestions please put them down in the comment section below because i do read them guys that's why i did this rosinante video today someone asked for it i said oh that that would be kind of fun every now and then someone will ask for a, for a deck where i'm like eh, i'm not in the mood for that but i still at least you know i, I still at least read your comment and it, it, it'll stick in my head for later you know what i mean sorry that's enough all right i'm done Appreciate you guys. Until next time, peace.